and welcome to the Chip Collective Podcast. Today we will attempt to talk about things that happened during the 2019 Consumer Electronics Show. Your hosts for today will be Jack Mangano, Moshe Duisi, Matthew Conitzer, and Cynical Unicorn. Yeah, it's the present because it's Vega, and it's the future because it's seven nanometer. <laughs> Vega's really uh, come and gone, in my opinion. I just like what Huang said, where he's just like, <laughs> In- Intel graphics is AMD, so who is AMD graphics? <laughs> yeah, that's actually funny. why I don't I don't understand so why funny. I don't understand why he said anything about it. Because when was the last time he said anything about AMD graphics? Because CEOs who started the company are all little children. Like he really went off. Like why did Musk call the cave diver like a pedophile? He's a pedophile because he thinks my submarine is stupid. <laughs> <laughs> well, Elon Musk is insane. I'm just saying. Yeah. This I don't think Jensen's ever really said anything like this. At least nah, recently. Jensen seems regular. He's a filthy when, fucking capitalist. He's gonna get the guillotine. But you know, beyond that, I, I know, I know, right. he's absolutely ruthless. But I mean, like, he really went off. He's got a cool leather jacket. I think he went off because he's actually sick of fighting with himself over his own products. He wants competition, and he's pissed off that it's not happening. Well, I mean, Navi might do something. My, uh, it's not here yet. And it's well, to be fair, now. to be fair, Vega is competing with the 2080, and you know it's Vega just on seven nanometers. That's all right, I guess. Now, of course, when Turing gets on same seven nanometers, I'm pretty then, sure he talks to Lisa Sue over the phone and is like, "Tell me your analytics. Tell me your install base." And you know, like they compare notes and shit because you know they're like you family. are tearing me apart, please. <laughs> Imagine if they made a six hundred millimeter squared seven nanometer Vega two. No, that's just disgusting. <laughs> Excuse you, what size was that? Six hundred. Six hundred millimeter squared. Can you even fit that on a? Yeah, what well, is the reticle yeah, size? You can fit that. So, so the reticle, it's uh, standard is uh, six inch, six inch with five x reduction, so one point two inches by one point two inches. Is that right? Oh wait. All right, let's do math because I thought it I, would have been the same as uh, sixteen nanometers. Twenty five point four times twenty five point four nine hundred thirty square oh, millimeters. Four x reduction. Oh. It, it'll be the same. It'll be the same. Okay. Until high NA UV. So, anyways, back on topic. What do you think the LP88 is? You think that's uh, 8.8 amp uh, power supply? What's LP88? No, where's that on, mentioned? On the Lakefield iodide. Oh, oh, yeah. Because know. we know that um, Intel files some patents where they have uh, like voltage regulators both on and off the die. So, if you're in like a really. <clears throat> So if you want like a really uh, efficient operation, you just do the power conversion on die, I guess. Um, okay, half meg of MLC. Does that yeah. mean that can't be flash, can it? That'd be silly. It's, yes, that would be quite silly. Like 500k of flash on die. That's yeah. There's three. There's two. Yeah, actually, I didn't think about that. So each CPU has its own. Yeah. And then there's the shared L2. Like, I wonder if, if it's kind of set up, like, like how they have it set up is it's like the big CPU has its own half meg L2. And then like the small CPUs share the 1.5 L2 <laughs> over on the left. And then they all yeah. share an L3, the which L3 is four meg. Right. Yeah. That's yeah, what it looks that's like. That's, um, Hard to tell. As for the colors, I imagine that's like, different um processes that they're using like all the orange stuff is going to be state-of-the-art 10 nanometer or whatever uh mm. blue stuff is going to be larger because it doesn't really benefit as heavily from that or it's all 10 nanometer all what's that it could it's all 10 nanometer the whole thing yeah the whole the whole active die is 10 nanometer I mean, oh it could wait be is like this one monolithic? Cell, no this isn't a it's triplets yeah, so like the the top chip is the one with, or sorry, the middle chip is the one with the big CPU, small CPU, memory, blah 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 blah. 
And they then need the to bottom, put... IO die <laughs> is the power delivery one. God, that is such a cute little Isn't it? Uh, motherboard, though. Yeah, it's like, it's just so tiny. I want to mm-hmm. give it a hug. It, you I might break it. I want its ears. So it has M.2. The M.2 is almost as big as the entire thing. So Project Athena is their follow-up to Ultrabook, it seems like. Yeah, Ultrabooks, those went over real well. Well, I mean, they kind of did. They're the reason why everything is so thin and light. I mean, yeah. eventually. Ultrabooks are good. But I think Ultrabook was supposed to be a bit less crap. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, you have to make compromises. I mean, that led to the Surface, and the Surface is pretty good. Other than the software oh. and Windows, because I, I don't get it. Yeah, Windows There's is not? a very... No, it's like people have reported a lot of driver issues with the Surface, which is kind of ironic really? because Microsoft, you know, makes a damn thing. I've had no driver issues so far, yeah. but... I mean, I'm just going by what I've heard. I have no first-hand experience with the Surface. Uh, what's the Surface laptop that only allows you to download things from the Microsoft Store? RT. There was an RT one forever ago. Yeah. They kind of gave up on that because it was shit. Yeah, it turns out nobody yeah. the, the The Windows Store is awful. Yeah. How could you live like that? Hey, but uh, how else can you play Forza? <laughs> you could pirate it, I guess. Mm. Wow. That's illegal. Look, yeah. I'm not smart. We've established this. No, you're smarter than me. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, they didn't really I mean, I didn't... say that much. <laughs> okay, so they didn't even say that much? I thought I kind of missed something. They showed more than they said about actual details that we would care about. Honestly, Intel doesn't really show a whole lot, do they? I mean, they showed more than AMD. Yeah. I don't know about that. AMD showed I... nothing, man. They, they showed like... a naked CPU. And okay, you know what, fair enough. I, I guess in terms of like, Pure technical, uh, whatever they showed quite a bit, but I want to know like how that like works. Yeah, well, you know, this is the consumer electronics show, but they showed that it's going to be coming out holiday twenty nineteen. <laughs> they actually have chips. Price got... like, yeah, Ice Lake? yeah. Oh, Dude, they okay, had a, that's great. They yeah, had everything running. Ice Lake doing like some. What was it? It was like animating some. Uh, animal or something moving it, based off its it was, skeleton is that just for a uh, laptop uh cpus or is it going to be like uh like the desktop ones as well uh i mean presumably it's going to be like low-end laptop initially just because you yeah. are suck. but as they ramp up it's going to be bigger yeah because like remember if we go back to uh 2014 i guess when a uh, broadwell came out it was Core M at first. That was dual core GT1 graphics, and eventually it ramped up like dual core GT2, quad core GT2, and then uh, quad core GT3. Eventually, yeah, that was all over the course of a few months. So, ten nanometer might take a bit longer. Man, I mean, well, right. that's right. There's ten nanometer ice. Like, I mean, it's in his hand. I believe it. Yeah, yeah. I don't see well, any. I mean, we also have demos running on Sansia, so. Of that Dell two in one laptop they showed off during the presentation. Yeah. What did that two in one have in it? Was it a quad core or just dual core? Uh, we have the leaked benchmarks. I can pull them up real quick. Oh, then we should be able to tell. Well, what's on that uh, that PCB? There's two. Uh, that's probably ED RAM and then the Ice Lake CPU. And that's okay. probably ED RAM no. because this is this is mobile. No, it's probably not ED RAM. It's probably the uh, the Southbridge. You think? Yeah, because they integrate that onto the package. All of the uh, U series CPUs do. Really? Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Haswell low power CPU. I don't know. We're, Just we're Google uh, four thousand U. Look at Y and U and integrated graphics. Yeah. Here we go. Like this is. Uh, This is just basic Haswell low power dual core. Huh. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That's what a dual core was back in the day. Yeah. That's it's pretty funky. big. That says, and I understand it has graphics in it, but that's probably as big as the Zen original die. Uh, I'm bigger. Skeptical. Bigger? I don't know. It looks about the same size. 
Well, it's longer. I mean, we also have no scale to go by well, there. They have the tri- <laughs> you have the triangle in the bottom left. I don't think those are standard sizes. I, I'm pretty sure those are standard. If the triangles aren't standard, what are? <laughs> I don't want to live in the world where we don't have standard size triangles. All right. So the Dell 2-in-1, it's uh, 1.6 gigahertz, 4-core, 8-thread. What's the uh, boost? Hmm. Maybe it's going to be 4 point something, I'd assume. If it's a we good... Have, uh, this is like an engineering sample, like early benchmark. Oh, we have no not. way of knowing. So it's like here, I can just snip the the line from. The so one point freaking bench. One point six base is. I think that's not bad for a U series. No, it's probably going to come way up from that. It's just. Okay, I see that. Is that like going to be CPU you or is zero, always... zero 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 zero? I was going to mm-hmm. say. I wonder what the uh, the Y CPUs are going to look like. Heck, they, you know, a lot of U series CPUs right now kind of like idle around that or do that on like site, lo- uh, on site loads. So you can see the U is uh, right above it. I just sent that too. Um, I don't know if like how they're going to, mm. how they're going to differentiate the market. Hmm. So is Ice Lake and Sunny Cove the same thing? Sunny Cove is the architecture. Ice Lake okay. is like the, the code platform. name. Yeah, Sunny Cove is just like the freaking layout and stuff. Okay. Weren't you the one who was talking about like the names for the actual cores and how no one cares about them? Me? Yeah. No, Unicorn. Oh, uh, yeah, no, it's like just the different names for the architecture versus the platform versus the whatever. Like uh, people oh. don't usually say Westmere EP. They usually call it Gulf Town. But that kind of stopped eventually. People are like, yeah, it's just Sandy, Sandy EP. It's well, just, let's get it, really confusing and say I'm running Coffee Lake S running on KB point Z370. Ah! Jesus. <laughs> oh, actually, here we go, Jack. This one's even better. It's. Excuse me a second. Let me go to the full resolution image. Go for it. Oh, boy. There we go. Give me that Same, 4K. Uh, same U CPU as above. It's just CPU and PCH integrated into single BGA package. So that was new with Haswell. So they've been doing single chip solution for a while. It's almost like a sock, but not quite. Is Snow Ridge going to be also a uh, multi chip? Looks well, like it. Not quite multi chip. I guess it is multi chip. Yeah, that's true. I can't it's wait. It's kind of weird Snow though, because the Snow Ridge looks a lot like. Um, it looks a lot like the die at the end of the Lakefield montage. Mm-hmm. I can't wait for r slash AMD to say hilarious and original memes like, ha ha ha, Ice Lake, then why is it running so hot? That's not nice <laughs> at all. And then nobody seems to understand that Intel 10 nanometer is significantly denser than uh, TSMC or Samsung 7 nanometer. To be fair, it is coming a little later, too. So if it came around the same time, I'd be a lot more impressed. Oh. So it kind of evens out. AMD gets there first. Intel has a slightly better process. Like the 7 nanometer that AMD is using is not a whole lot denser than Intel 14 nanometer. Yeah. Like it's. I guess it's significantly denser, but it's not double density. Yeah, yeah, of course. Nowhere close to that. Uh, the, the nanometer names are just marketing nowadays. Pretty much. Like, even for Intel, I don't think that's a true 14. Well, it, mm, mm, it's I'm like, uh, over, uh, yeah, out of every single person that makes a 14, that is obviously the closest. But I don't think it's true 14. Someone made like a chart of like all it's the. It's because it. It notes. doesn't matter anymore. Once they went to yeah. like FinFets, all the dimensions like changed. Yeah. Where it's no longer like whenever they went to the, the first FinFet, which was, I guess, like 20, 22, I think. Yeah, it was, was 22. 22? Because TSMC right. made FinFets in 22, and AMD and Radio were like, we don't want that. We'll say in 28. It was a 28 or 20 nanometer FinFet, I, I think. No, maybe yeah. it was 20. I think it was 20 I, FinFet. They they okay. skipped 20 nanometer in either case. AMD and NVIDIA did. For Intel, yeah. I believe their 22 was the first FinFest yes. I need to check. I think so. I yeah. 
What's so they had to like define it as like 22, like equivalent pretty much. And then from then everyone was just that we're just going to make it up as we go along. PCI express lanes. Do we need more? I thought it was five. interesting that Lakefield isn't PCIe four. Is it still three? There's really well, no according reason. to their little die. <laughs> Does it really need to be four though? I don't know of any reason to do it, and because it's targeting low power stuff, that also means that like That's doubling true. the clock rate on the PCI Express bus is going to significantly increase power consumption for that link. So. I don't really see a use for it. It's not going to be running discrete graphics. It's just... Well, hey, you don't know that. NVMe storage, really. Okay, you're Under right. We'll be running like an MX150 or a Radeon 540. Or an Intel not announced yet GPU. Yes, thank you, Jack. Or yeah. if it has a Thunderbolt 3 controller, you can hook up your 2080 Ti. Yeah, and I don't think Thunderbolt with PCIe 4 is going to exist quite so soon oh yeah. yeah 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 i wish it would though i wish you could i wish you could upgrade it on your own laptop because i'd love to have something more powerful yeah i still don't see the need for pcie4 at all i mean we uh, storage maybe but anything else that i care about no not at all yeah. storage is going to see an uplift although even then sequential speeds and consumer applications mean that no that's just silly <laughs> you don't need that um it's going to be good for like 100 plus gigabit ethernet and data centers it's going to be good for storage and data centers but honestly at this point i'm not sure how useful it's going to be for um gpu compute mainly yeah. because like the uh the radeon instinct that amd announced the mi60 on the the, the <laughs> seven nanometer vega that's got infinity fabric links for gpu to gpu communication nvidia has had nv link for a while uh, mm -hmm. Hell, if you look at Power9, the first platform with PCI Express 4, that also supports NVLink natively, so the CPU can directly hook up to a, a GPU over that. So, yeah. Oh, no. What was that big document you were working on about? Was it, was it about PCI Express lanes? Yeah, it was uh, chipset stuff. I'm still poking at that. Cool. I'm going to get that finished up eventually. AMD's data sheets are a lot harder to find. Um, but from the they looks are. of it. So actually, speaking of AMD and data sheets, what I have found suggests that Ryzen is using the same PCI Express configuration as APUs did previously, like as far back as FM1, from what are I understand. We, was Nirvana the FPGA thing? It was it's, their uh, uh, deep learning compute stick. Oh, I okay. thought it smelled like teen spirit. Jack, I'm going to... Uh, God. Mm. Killing me. I'm ashamed. No, it's not FPGA. So FPGA is Altera. Yeah. Oh, um, that's what I'm thinking of. Yep. Which I think they're also starting to get some money from. They're uh, doing uh, like Xeon <laughs> um, FPGA combined uh, chips. Um, anyway, but like just back to PCI Express 4. So... But what about Nirvana? What well, did, we'll did you have it. other things to say? I'm sorry. No, it's it's fine. You know what? No, you no. don't care about the 300 billion market that Intel is going to tap into. Look, I I, I was just trying to. What no, I I'm just messing. Just just talk about PCIe okay. four. It's fine. this is just terrible. It's okay, gone so, wrong. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't think that a Ryzen 3000 series will necessarily have all of its lanes be Gen 4. It might, but that's not a guarantee. Because if you look at uh, if you look at past platforms, like when AMD introduced PCI Express 3 with Kaviri, um, it was only for the graphics card link. So only 16 out of the 24 lanes were at Gen 3 speeds. The other two, which were both uh, X4 links. But yeah, other eight lanes, which were composed of two X4 links, whatever, one to the chipset and one to just general purpose devices. Those were only Gen 2 speeds. So it hasn't been until Verizon that they upgraded everything to Gen 3. And I think uh, on it, FM2, if you crossfire two GPUs, it would be 2X times 8. Yeah, unless you had Kaviri. 
if he well that would need fm2 plus though whatever and i'll admit my i did when i was uh like first building pcs i put an athlon 880k with two 380s nice and it was garbage and i knew it was garbage i knew i'd make a huge mistake yeah because i was Um, getting like terrible frames if you look yeah. at Intel as well, um, it wasn't until the 7 Series chipset, so that would have been a Sandy Bridge E or just Ivy Bridge for uh, LGA 1155. They upgraded the CPU again for the graphics. They upgraded that to Gen 3, but the DMI link was still at Gen 2 speeds, DMI link being you know, effectively PCI Express. So maybe we'll see PCI Express 4 across the board. I'm not counting on it. I mean, people were saying that the first slot would be PCIe 4, just to jump in. Well, right. right. That was on um, the, the legacy motherboards. But, like, assuming we get new motherboards that support PCIe 4 across the, like, as much as possible, I'm not sure that the chipset is going to be upgraded, which really sucks because that's kind of, that could use the, uh, that could use the help. Yeah, are they going to do a new chipset? Actually, if they do do a new chipset, then... Trying to I think. think they will. I think they will. They, they will, but all the old ones will yeah. be compatible. That's just right. Uh, well, I think they'll do like as because they were going to do a Z490. I think they're going to do a Z590. Like it, it's actually annoying. I think there is a very good reason that Intel going went from like B85 to uh, B150 to B250 to B360. Wait, shit. Yeah. Okay, B360. There we go. Wrong emphasis. Because AMD released their own B350 first because, haha, that's and now funny... And now Intel is skipping the 300 and 400 series chipset. They're going straight to 500 to beat AMD. Yeah, it's obnoxious. It's just so obnoxious. So here's a fun question, though, for you. So we saw that the new Zen, right, is two chiplets, and we just assume one of them is I.O., one of them is like this exact same chiplet as Rome, right? Yeah. But Mm -hmm. where is the integrated GPU? It's going to be where, there. well, that other spot for a chiplet can use either. No, no, no. They showed us the die. There was no other chiplet on there. Where was the iGPU? Was it on the I.O.? Or wait, what, probably. The, wait, what do you mean? I don't chiplet. understand what you mean. For the new GPUs? No, I'm just saying, like, oh, okay, they showed well, us the new Zendai. Where yeah. is the uh, integrated graphics? Is it it's in gonna, that they can, or chiplet? No, it's or not. The they, they'll be able to make a new, a different die, and they'll put it in that space below the eight, the eight core CPU. But I'm saying they showed us the die from their demos that was running graphics. Does it just Wait, not have an iGPU? Wh- like which one are you talking? I don't understand what you're talking about. Oh, do you mean the 12 nanometers in? Because those are all monolithic or 12 nanometer APUs because yeah, those are all monolithic. Those, the APUs they were talking about are, that's not, it's the same series, but it's Zen Plus and 12 nanometers. It's Raven Ridge and they did it on 12 LP instead of 14 LPP. Yes. Okay. Let me. Let me pull up Matisse, right? Like, where is the where is the integrated graphics in Matisse? Is it in the the seven nanometer chiplet, or is it on the IO? It's it's neither. They're going to add it. You're just speculating though. Zen doesn't have Zen doesn't have integrated graphics. Ryzen. Oh Jesus Christ! Okay. Look here. Here is the Zen. Matisse does not have integrated graphics. We have seen Matisse with the big chip. That's IO hub, and we've seen. We've seen it with the little chip. That's the CPU cores. That, that's the little chiplet there. We yeah, so seen... Matisse won't have any data. <laughs> well, why not? I don't well, get why it, not. It, it, it's there is the a non-zero thing. chance that this design could support integrated graphics if they use two chiplets, one of which is a GPU and the other is a CPU, both of which are linked up to the same I.O. hub over Infinity Fabric. Yeah. Basically yeah. an APU, but split up among multiple dies. The Picasso APUs that we've seen, that's just Raven Ridge on 12 LP. There's yes. nothing really fancy about them. I okay. don't think we're going to see the multi-chip, chiplet-based, whatever, APU design until later this year at the earliest, if not next year. Because yeah. it looks like APUs are lagging behind a generation, which really sucks. Yeah, that's really weird. So then you're basically saying like you could either get like a 16-core processor or you could get an integrated 
GPU, but you yes. can't have both. You, you can't have both. No. Okay. Unless, unless they put, <laughs> unless unless they put like a tiny little GPU on that I/O, and that's just for display and nothing else. Yeah, Axfer says I hate that AMD is using three thousand naming for APU and CPU. Yeah, yeah I agree. Like they're, I, 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 I understand why they're doing it because it's the same product line, but it's really confusing as far as the hardware goes because they're so dramatically different. And, like, and I think it, I think it cheapens the three thousand series tagline because three thousand series supposed to be seven nanometers, really good, awesome, revolutionary, and it's well. Then you have the APUs. Yeah. Except, oh, well, predict well the desktop APUs will be a lot better, presumably. There was customers uh, cared though. There was a roundtable discussion with a certain Dr. Lisa Sue about um, some of the some of the questions asked included like semi or some of the answers given included like possibly GPU chiplets or semi custom chiplets or yeah, she miscellaneous said, bonus stuff like that that could be done with that uh, design. She said, you can expect us to put something in that spot. Yeah. And I mean, if you look at the mask, like some of the photos uh, that you see, if you look at it at an angle, there's very yeah, definitely mm -hmm. like solder ball points or. And traces. Uh, yeah. It's not just, yep, this is blank space. This is a yeah, they, ground plane. Even if there wasn't, even though, even if you couldn't see those or even if they didn't physically exist, obviously they were going to put something there. They didn't put that in the corner for fun. Yeah. But uh, yeah. It's just funny that uh, that leak, I don't even know if the spec sheet's real or not, but it's looking that way. If that, it'll end up that way, maybe, regardless of that uh, spec sheet was fabricated or not. Yeah. Just, just really core counts and, uh, and prices aren't entirely sure, obviously. Yeah, like, you know, had a good point, though, right, in terms of like the, uh, the memory channel. You're limited by the socket, so like... There yeah. might not be a 16 core Zen just because the uh, memory would be gimped, kind of. Well, 2990 exists, and that's apparently gimped by memory. So, yeah, I mean, like, proportionally, it's going to be the same as 64 core. But Threadripper is a different socket, right? Yeah, it is yeah, a different but socket, but AMD is no stranger to men memory bottlenecking, it's even on their GPUs as well. Yeah, and it sucks though, right? Like, why wouldn't yeah, they just... Yeah, but it's a trade-off. You're getting 16 cores for a very cheap price on a very cheap platform, and you, you have to accept some trade-offs for that. I don't think but it'd be a bad deal. Why wouldn't they just put it on the Threadripper platform? Well, they're, gonna put, they're probably going to put 16 cores on the Threadripper, but I'm just saying, if you want 16 cheap cores on a cheap platform, you get under like $1,000. Hey, that's good. Do you think they have two 16 core offerings? I mean, that's kind of like splitting their market, right? Yeah, uh, I mean, they did two well, they eight did. With They had two eight cores. They had the 1900X and the 1800X. Yeah. But they were very definitely different platforms. If yeah. you go back to, uh, to Intel, they've had six core or eight core on, or not eight core, four core on two platforms simultaneously as well. Like, you, that's got, not, you got the 9900K and the 9900X, or I'm sorry, yeah, the, uh, the 98. 20x i think is the eight core now something like that anyways yeah whatever it is um i'm trying to think i've yeah if you go back like the uh the 3820 versus the 2600k or the 4820k versus the 3770k same architecture just one of them has a crap ton more <laughs> um yeah regarding um 16 cores on am4 though number one from the looks of it l3 cache is probably going to be doubled per core um yeah, yeah. but additionally 64 core 8 channel which we know rome is using because it's compatible on socket sp3 with existing epic chips um 64 core 8 channel rome is proportionally the same as 16 core dual channel am4 should that exist and it's also the same as 32 core 4 channel threadripper which currently exists like it, yeah i would argue that amd is getting on the high end of uh cores per memory channel if that's a good metric to use but it's cheap it, so. they've done it so i'm not it's nothing new i wouldn't say and i don't think it's that big of a deal like imagine if they put two chiplets on there and on every single one they took out two cores per so that they could get down to 12 cores. I don't think that makes much sense. Yeah, sure it does. Salvage dies. And you've still got... No, no, but I don't think... 
and you can sell the 16 core next gen. Yeah, I know. I know they, they could use it for like the, the bad dies. But the thing is, is that eventually the yields will get that good on a, on a seven nanometer die that you're not going to need to do that. Yeah, big deal. Laser them off anyway. Who cares? I just yeah. I just think they would be missing out some opportunity to sell more 16 core CPUs. Oh. No. And they, they sold could, 12 they, core. They wouldn't have sold otherwise. Well, here's the deal. When you buy a computer, you're not buying a product. You're buying specifications. Like you're not yeah. buying you're not buying a piece of computer glass. You're buying the idea of cores and gigahertz more so than anything. So if AMD is lasering off cores, who cares what their yields are? You're still purchasing 12 cores and X gigahertz. It but I'm just saying matter. it's a missed opportunity to uh, to increase prices and get like a better like a better deal. No, I mean, I, you're totally wrong on this. Like they've got to capture every part of the market they can. And like, think about it. You want to have like the best well, possible clock, right? You want to have high clocks for these parts. So if you find one or two cores can't clock as high as the rest, Oh, they just saying, laser those off. And no, I'm not saying they're not going to do that. Core. They'll, they'll do that for some parts. I just think like there's a difference between getting market share and making money. But like, that's how they make money, though. Like you're subsidizing all the higher cores, right? Like, like if it was just eight and 16, they'd lose a shit ton of money. Well, AMD needs to start 14, making 12, more 12, premium wow. products, I think. Like, yeah, like that's it's what Threadripper is. Yeah, but then they can also put that on AM4. Yeah, well, but, you could have. Why? Yeah, to make more money. How? I, mean, I think they, they might try they make more money with Rift Ripper. Okay, so here's the thing: they can put like the kind of okay uh, chiplets that have uh, eight working cores on AM4, and then below that they can put chiplets that aren't that quite as good as like their twelve cores, and then uh, you know, and then their eight cores as well. But I just don't see any reason why they wouldn't do sixteen cores. Easy. I mean, they There's might do 16 on AM4. That's fine. Like, they wouldn't do 12 cores because Ryzen 4000 is now 16 core. Great. They've just left an ace in the hole for the next generation of chips. And I don't yeah. think we're getting a process shrink either. I'm pretty sure that's confirmed 7 nanometers. So, like, Zen 2 plus or Zen 3 or whatever it ends up being. Uh, it's 7 nanometers plus. Yeah, exactly. That's not, that's not a real shrink. I, I understand so that. So, they're not going to be increasing any density, which means they're still going to be using 8 core chiplets, assuming they stick with this design, which means, yeah, they're just going to save 16 nanometer or 16 core. Hey, what if Intel uh, releases. Um, Sunny Cove, like a 10 core Sunny Cove on LGA 1150, whatever. Well, shoot, AMD can just say, we don't have two more cores anymore. We got six more cores. Because four more cores than the 9900K is still a lot more cores than the 9900K and not a bad value at all. Like, I can, I can see AMD doing 16 cores because they're kind of nuts and that's just what they've been doing lately. But I don't think it's a guarantee. Well, because they can save that for later. But I think it exists in like a different spot. Like uh, it kind of exists in this weird middle ground between Threadripper and Ryzen. It doesn't exist like it's not like, uh, oh, haha, we have two. We have four more cores, but you also need like a, a good motherboard for it. And it's also going to consume a lot more power than most other CPUs. And it's going to be at a kind of a higher price point. It's not like something that's like uh, they're moving from. Eight, there's not like they're moving uh, from eight cores to 12 cores at like the same $330 price tag if they are going to do $330 for their 12 core. Oh, they're absolutely going for the higher like four or $500 range. Number one, they did that with first gen Ryzen. Yeah. Number two, Intel now has four to $500 CPUs on the same. Yeah, platform. I agree. I agree that they are going to bring back the $500 price point. It's just a, a question whether it's going to be the 16 or the 12 core. Assuming they exist. Yeah, well, the, well, they're absolutely going to be uh, more than eight cores. We don't know that. Like, Lisa Sue has hinted at that, which heavily implies it. Why it's wouldn't they possible. do? I know we don't. I know we don't officially know, but if they don't do more than eight cores, then what are they doing? They're APUs. making good processors. Yeah, but we would have we'd rather have more cores than uh, another graphics I chip. I wouldn't. Twelve is my limit. And that's six twelve. But then, but Intel was coming out with comically uh, very soon, aren't they? Uh, no. Isn't Comet late this year? 
They're a 10 core uh, mainstream chip. The 10 core mainstream chip with no supporting evidence behind it. I, I've heard about it. I don't know. I'll be honest. I don't know if it has a supporting evidence. I've just heard about it. If it doesn't have supporting evidence, then never mind. Yeah, I know. Okay. Yeah, Axifer doesn't have a microphone to input his above sentiments. He says, he says, at that point, they price cut the 16 cores, make the 16 cores only $50 more than a 12 core, or leave the 12 cores to OEMs. Nah, AM dollar sign, I assume that's a capital four, is not their yeah. money maker. AM foreign gaming are not where AMD makes their money. They are strictly to not be left behind in all markets, keep their name everywhere. Followed by, is there a chance AMD could do 16 cores on, Rice, on Ryzen but cut SMT? I don't uh, think, I think that's, that's possible, ooh. but that's not, that's not really likely, I don't think, because. That's like, uh, that's like spending a dollar to save a penny, really. Well, but it's more like. Security reasons, SMT, you know, security I conscious mean, people. Then why not cut SMT on everything? You can disable that in BIOS. Um, yeah. No, just as far as performance goes, like ballpark estimate, SMT is going to give you like 20, 30% extra multi thread yeah. performance. So if you have 12 core, 24 thread versus 16 core, 16 thread, they're going to be pretty similar. You just have to have better dies to have the not hyper threaded 16 core. But what about the heat generated? It's like. Yeah, there's... and that's fair because it's going to be lower thermal density because the cores aren't working as hard. So I don't think SMT yeah. adds that much to power consumption. <laughs> Sorry. I don't think it does. It does. It, it does. does quite a lot. Like okay. the 30 it's doing a whole bunch of wasted calculations. The, the cores are like not inherently more efficient or inherently faster. They're just doing more work every second. So why do they do SMT on Epic then? They do. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, so it's less efficient. Why do they do that? Because, because it's more clock lower? It does more calculations per second. It's more parallel. That's the kind of thing data centers want. Yeah. Well, I understand what data centers want, but you're saying that SMT adds a lot of power. Yes, because it's doing more work. Yeah, if a, if a Epic with a bajillion cores in it is clocked at 2.1 gigahertz with SMT, and it's two bajillion with the SMT, it's worth it because parallel. Okay, so why wouldn't they put it on the 16 core? I'm just saying, like, they could do that in order to differentiate the AM from the, the thread rip, right? Like, you could do yeah. 16 cores without SMT, just like Intel had a part without SMT, right? What yeah. Was that? yeah, the i5. <laughs> Just and, but AMD's been making like a big racket about unlocked parts, SMT. Don't you think that'd be a little bit of a step backwards? Siri, that Google, what is the Ryzen 3 line? <laughs> yeah, I know, but that's like, those are like $50, $100 parts. Those are not very expensive. Yeah, they're yeah, but it could diversify the market a bit. Like, not everyone's going to use SMT. Yeah, it's diversify the market in a bit, right? I, th I don't think everyone's going to benefit from SMT, but I just think that would like, like that that's working that's like taking two steps back but like what if you could get a 16 core without smt for the same cost as like 9900k no yeah. 9700k yeah exactly then i think it would make a lot of sense because you're going to get more benefit well, than you then, from having hyper threading well amd is right? then just selling a 16 core for less money i don't know if that's worth it to them yeah, but they might be able to like salvage more parts that way or yeah. feel more market share, right? Like that would be something like I could see making sense. Yeah, it wasn't able to validate with SMT for the higher clocks, but you know, you can get the higher clocks without it. Of course. Right. And well, as I just said, um, some tasking next to nothing from SMT threads, data center loads are normally programmed for parallel loads. Lots of software for consumer skills really poorly on SMT. And also you can clock cores slightly higher when SMT is disabled. Again, down to thermal density there because each core is using less power because yeah. there's more stalls, which is technically not an efficient use of resources. But on the other hand, single thread performance is better. So whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Well, like well, there's reasons to not have SMT. Security is also uh, a good one. I'm thinking about that uh, demo they showed. Uh, the the power consumption was pretty low. We also the, have no idea what the clocks are, or yeah, what fair enough, are or really anything, or for that matter, what the Intel chip's power limit was. What do you think? And I'm not just limiting this to like SMT, and I don't know if they've made improvements on SMT since it's debuted, but they uh, could have made. I mean, they've likely made other than seven nanometer 
uh, improvements to power efficiency. Like that's a that was a pretty decent uh, uh, power efficiency uh, disparity between the 9900K, which was probably at 4.5 gigahertz, and the uh, the the, the eight core. Yeah. Keep in mind, Ryzen has traditionally been good at Cinebench. Yeah, and, that's true. Um, for that matter, if like we've got a 95 watt plus whatever the motherboard vendor decided was appropriate for the 9900K on the Intel side. And we've got, let's say, a 65 watt TDP target for AMD. I mean, depending on how. I, I don't really know, like short term power limits work, honestly, but like it's possible Intel? that. God, no way, because that was the instantaneous power drop. What am I thinking? Oh, shoot. I don't know. There's not nearly enough information to make a conclusion about it. Like, I, of course, if you. Uh... If you if you up the clock speeds on the uh, the Ryzen part, obviously the efficiency would drop, and it would look a lot more even if you uh, dropped clocks on the 9900K. But I mean, for wh- for what kind of like performance they're targeting, that is a pretty big difference because uh, 4.5 to 4.6 on the 900K is not like super low. Well, that's... we don't know what the clocks were. We just had the power. Well, we know what the score was. Yeah, that's fair. We could extrapolate average clock. Yeah, we if you it is almost uh very almost certainly around four point four. I mean four point five, four point six. And yeah, power does fluctuate. So did, did they only show like one figure for power consumption and not like a? Uh, or they is just this like the power consumption on screen when it was doing the when it was doing the bench? Oh, OK, all. so they showed it live. Yeah. OK, so that's not that you could you could yeah. figure out what the average was from the looks of it. It was instantaneous power draw from the wall. If I were uh, if I yeah. were guessing. I think yeah, that's, a simple system. that's fair. That That's open. But yeah, I just think. Uh, I just don't think there's any point in disabling SMT. I just don't think, I think the, the cons are bigger than the pros. I just think that undermines AMD's platform. Because AMD has like, they've been talking about unlock CPUs, more SMT, giving more the con- to the consumer for a lower price. Have they really been bragging about SMT? Like, it's just a thing with Zen, but I haven't really seen them talk about it in marketing. It just kind of... Yeah, they don't talk about SMT that much, but I just think, like, when people think about AMD and they think about Ryzen, they think you get all the threads that you could possibly get, and it's not really segmented a whole lot other than, like, obviously cores and stuff, because that's fair game. Well, why isn't SMT fair game? Like, I just don't understand why wouldn't you offer people the option of getting, like a Zen processor and you can get more than eight cores, but you can't get SMT. Cause people don't like it when Intel does that, that much. People yeah, just know the I five sells amazingly well. Yeah. <laughs> because it has a really high single core. Like it has, yeah. it has, it has, it uh, doesn't have pros. SMT. Yeah, I know, but AMD has to offer SMT cause they're not Intel. What that doesn't make any sense? Like you, do you think they could sell, uh, the, like the, let's they say sell- like this, they couldn't sell the 2700X for like $500. No one would buy that. But imagine if you were picking between an Intel six core part, no hyper threading, or a AMD like 10 core part without hyper threading. Like, I don't know. I said that backwards. You know what I'm talking about? Six slash 12 Intel part versus like a straight 10 core AMD part. Like people would pick AMD. I don't right? know about that. I think they pick Intel. They could they could offer up something like they could offer something different. Intel only offers like super low core parts with hyper threading or without like, hyper threading. AMD, AMD could do like the opposite. AMD has a worse reputation. They have uh, certain caveats. They have to offer more than Intel. They have to I'm offer. Bit... They have to have to offer lower prices. They have to offer uh, these features. They have to offer a lot of things Intel doesn't at a lower price point. So I just don't think uh, I just don't think if they removed SMT that would go down pretty badly. And if they were ever going to remove SMT, I don't think they would they would like show you it and then they would just take it away suddenly. I don't know. I guess 
I mean, Intel like, literally just did that with the i7. So yeah, but then they like added like an i9. So well, and, and are people really a big fan of that? I don't think they are. I mean, eight core, eight thread versus six core, twelve thread. I mean, it didn't performance really, is a wash. It just didn't really change. That's the thing. I wouldn't say it's worse. I would just say it didn't really change. And if they offered more cores and then less threads, you'd be like, okay, well, what was the point? So what else do we have to talk about? NVIDIA? Uh, NVIDIA was super boring, but it made a lot of sense. I've paid no attention to it whatsoever. I guess they... uh, Oh, I found it. 2060. Yeah, they launched the 2060. Yeah. Yeah. And a larger cache. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. Cache is... well, we none of us really care about the 2060, right? Is that pretty much understood? Yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's all I mean, right. It's a really is good it, product, it, and they need it. Is it too it, little, too late, it. or it's is too it little, like, too late? Did they launch things in the wrong order? Because that's what I think. Well, I even mean, if it launched first, who cares? It's just a 2070 Ti with like a fifty dollar discount. Ooh, you're you're eating into the marketing, aren't you? You're comparing it with the tw- the 1070 Ti. It's marketing. I mean, well, it's about that fast. I yeah, think I agree. that uh, number one, it's going to be a huge mess because of all of the uh, the memory configurations, which is yeah. hilarious. Um, well, is that really happening? Are, people are going to read hard. Was that confirmed at CES? No. Yeah, I don't know if this memory configuration thing is going to happen. I think it's going to be like actual capacity. semi-custom versions is I think what's going to happen. Like they're going to have like a bunch of them that they're going to sell to like PC like cafes or whatever in China. Sure. And they're going to get some gimped version. That's really cheap. Yeah, that's true. The, uh, they've already GP done that. And 65 gigabyte was like a China exclusive part. Yeah, exactly. Like no one's going to buy it over in the States, but like who cares, right? They just made some agreement to sell a couple million of them and they're going to take all their cash and laugh. Yep. Yeah. 2060, not that great. Uh, you tried NVIDIA or you didn't. On the other hand, it does bring real time ray tracing to a, reasonably low price point i mean that's yeah, yeah but it's so slow at that point who cares it's pretty but, but it's oh slow no, and it's i can't two games. max out my new real-time <laughs> ray trace hey, you paid 350 dollars for a gpu you should be able to max out a few things no not really no, but that's never been the case <laughs> they, they 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 showed with their own nvidia numbers that with rtx on and dlss and battlefield whatever the fuck you still get 60 fps yeah. yeah, but everything else is set to like medium. Oh no, oh, medium settings. <laughs> okay, no, hang on. I need to complain. So, like, if you look at PC master race shit where it's like, why should you build a PC? Well, if you don't like the low frame rates that you're getting, you can just lower the settings for a higher frame rate. Well, 60 followed isn't that high people, though. Followed up by people saying shit like, do ultra settings this because is like on a ryzen but 60 Listen isn't Reddit. 60 isn't that high though for medium settings is that's stock weak. standard great if you want to have a higher than 60 fps frame rate then you need to spend more than a 60 fps or or you it. just turn ray tracing off <laughs> just turn that off yeah, but what if you want the eye candy? Because like, but it's yeah. not you, like you know, hardware and box. Like, you gotta a bunch let of this scenes. go. Like, everyone likes different things. Like, if I'm I know, I understand. Dota, you can I want like 144 hertz and 1440p. Like, but if I'm playing Skyrim, I don't care if I have more than 60 frames per second. I understand. I, I, understand. I want the money. If you like, <laughs> if you like ray tracing, that's totally fine. I'm just saying it's not that great. It yeah, must, but it's, it's a good product. Like, they're gonna sell a bunch event, of those. Like, like, just wait a little bit. Let's wait and see and see, uh, like, new games, better performance, more optimization. Well, that here's a really cool new thing that RTX what? will give you. They partnered, they partnered with OBS to give CPU quality GPU encoding. Yeah, wow, I that's a that. big deal. I'm, I'm not, not sure even... how well it will work, though. I saw it during the presentation. That was, like, the one thing. I... But it's, like, it's not OBS Studio. It's, like... Streamworks or something? Well, it's just a fork of the same thing. So, now I think that's actually a really big deal because yeah. GPU encoding is easy to access, but right now it's not that good. It doesn't look as good as CPU. If they can get, so it's like, I said it looked like shit, and then people, oh. the uh, what was it? The GeForce like streaming Twitter responded with like ninety nine percent of Streamlabs users use Envy Ink instead of. 
Uh, just because they use it doesn't mean it's better. <laughs> yeah, that just means they're idiots. <laughs> And I was just like, okay, I didn't know if they had actually updated the NVIDIA encoder and not look like garbage since last time I checked. Like, is there anything different? I, um, I guess use on the I 2080s? Used, I use the NV encoder on my 1080 Ti in Adobe to export using a third-party plugin. And it gives me a whole lot of control over the quality. And I don't know, do any of my high-resolution YouTube videos look like shit? Uh, for like, for like really, uh, good details, like for like meshes and stuff, it'll kind of artifact. Yeah, a little bit, but I think that's, yeah. that's YouTube on my end with the, no, with the no, that I upload. It looks fine. Nah, well, you if, when you upload it to YouTube, the difference between CPU and GPU probably won't be that big. Yeah. Because YouTube will shred it anyways. Yeah, <laughs> but if you're like, if you're looking at the original source, you could probably tell the difference in some parts. Like GPU yeah. encode is already decent. But if you can get as good as CPU, then I think Turing will have a, an actually really good uh, selling point. Yeah. That would yeah. be good for content creators. But it was really hard, though. I, I did that test before. I exported with CPU, exported with the GPU, and then I brought single exact frames back into Premiere. I differenced the frames. There was no difference. Hmm. And uh, was this recent? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just a, Maybe like they've done some ago. work on it. I just think people don't know how to use the software that they're given. But <laughs> if NVIDIA can work on these features that leverage the RT cores and the tensor cores, like some maybe either work more on RTX and DLSS and add more things like this really good GPU encoding, I think Turing can earn its price point. I just think right now it's not a good deal, but it could be. And maybe the uh, 2060, maybe we'll be looking at the 2060 a little more positively. Picture how many little kids playing Fortnite are like, yeah. mom, mom, just give me the 2060. Mom, I want V-Bucks. Exactly. <laughs> See, you get it. Mom, buy how me many, V-Bucks. How many hats could you get with uh, $350 no, I'm not worth of buying. V-Bucks? I swear to God. Okay. You, you okay there, Cynical? Fine. No, I heard Jesus. fast walking. Hey. What? Are you yelling for me? I'm not dying. The answer was yes, but I'm not dying. Okay, because I was on the second floor. Oh, cool. That was really loud. Yeah, what do you need? Uh, nothing. It's, it's fine. I, I love you. <laughs> I'm leaving. Bye. Bye. Yep. <laughs> I'm not dead yet. God, I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad I live in the dorm. Oh, that was beautiful. <laughs> I'm okay, okay. I'm not cutting that. I'm leaving it in. Okay. Doing it live. Mom, <laughs> you <never laughs> another. What are we going with here? Yeah, so that, that's my mother. Yeah. So, so, are we going to talk about the the free let's, sync let's incident? Talk about Dr. Unicorn's mom. Yeah, okay. let's talk about that. How yeah, many frame has... rates can she run? Does she know that you sniff Sharpies? <laughs> <laughs> Not intentionally. What are it we going to talk about now? Let's... Yeah, yeah, what's free, the new Free sync. <laughs> free sync. I like how I like this summary. Especially the hypocritical remarks that FreeSync doesn't work while bashing AMD, but they are actually working on AMD. It's just DisplayPort Adaptive Sync. It's it's just yeah yeah fine. There's nothing think, special about it. I was thinking Nvidia could go one of two ways with supporting it. They could either take the the environment AMD has worked very hard to create and kind of like usurp it, and they're like, "Hey, nice work you did, thanks." And then they basically use that to accelerate their products. It, or they could just shit on it. It looks like they're shit adaptive on it. sync. Like there's nothing special about it. It's AMD's fault for taking a standard DisplayPort feature and selling it as like a premium product. Yeah. Well, they're not really selling as a premium product. The FreeSync doesn't really add that much like price on top of like well, monitors right. without it. But it's a premium in the sense that this is a fancy marketing selling point sure. to buy our product for. AMD. Well, really, AMD spent money on the environment and the brand, and not really the. The technology. the technology. 
Like yeah, they want, to, they've adopted the standard. the standard and they want it to be in all the things because they support it. Nvidia didn't. Yeah. Now, Incidentally, Nvidia didn't. this isn't Nvidia being altruistic. I don't think, I think yeah. this is more Intel is supporting DisplayPort Adaptive Sync. Intel discrete graphics are going to support Intel or DisplayPort Adaptive Sync. Therefore, if Nvidia doesn't support it, then they're going to be left out when, uh, yeah, Intel stuff but, comes. But I, but I really think Nvidia's killed two birds with one stone because how many people are buying AMD GPUs just for free sync and they don't want to spend the money on G Sync? And now that doesn't, AMD doesn't really have that selling point anymore. Free sync. Is that really or, a thing? Like, do people I really? Think, I, I bought. Yeah. I, I overpaid a lot for my Vega because I because I already have two free sync monitors. I don't want to pay more for G Sync. I mean, like. I just didn't see the value of getting NVIDIA. Yeah, see, you. that's the thing. That's the thing. That's how they get you because you've got a free sync monitor now. Yeah. And you don't yeah. want to lose that. Therefore, <laughs> you don't want to buy NVIDIA and you're kind of locked into the brand. And now yeah. NVIDIA has yeah. taken that, uh, that advantage away. But they've still got the advantage with G-Sync because yeah. PC yeah. cars, that's not free sync compatible. Well, I'm not sure I want to buy AMD or Intel this time yeah. around. because So they, they, have the, they, they ate their cake and have it too. It's pretty smart. I think this is a pretty smart thing they've done in terms of uh, their corporate strategy. Yeah, also then just shitting on free sync is hilarious. So, so they can also, for the, for the monitors, I think for the monitors they don't officially support... It'll be like, wow, this isn't really that good. I mean, it kind of works, but what if I upgraded to a G Sync premium monitor and it would work the way that uh, I really want it to? Like, I think that's the thing that Nvidia is going to push. Like, oh, they're going to give know. they're going to give you a taste, but they're not going to give you the carrot. But they, I mean, they did say they tested 400 monitors and only 12 passed. Well, that's what to whose criteria? Nvidia's criteria. Does Nvidia doesn't really have an incentive? to make adaptive sync look like this great thing. Well, I mean, it's not right. Like there's a lot of monitors. I, I don't think it's a great thing. I think it's a good thing. I don't think it's like some like amazing technology. It's just that it's, it's a standard and well, NVIDIA like wants people is, to buy the premium. Well, the thing is the default free sync standard is garbage, right? Like it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't limit it enough to where you're guaranteed. Like the default standard is like just plus or minus five frames or something, right? Like the moment you go below 55, it just like immediately starts stuttering. But, but you also, you have a uh, low frame rate compensation that fixes that. And that's driver's side. The default side. one is pretty garbage, right? Like versus G-Sync where like G-Sync, it has to go down. Yeah, G-Sync's better. G-Sync's better. But I like, don't that's think what it's... he's saying, right? It's like the demos they showed were like tearing and stuff like that related to the fact that like the cheap free sync monitors just can't overdrive that much either way. Yeah, so but that's not, because they're you know, cheap. Point. G sync monitors are always like a lot more expensive. Oh, sure. So, I, that's so, just like that's I think that's just the 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 trade off you're doing with a, a standard that's more open. It could be used for a lot more things. Obviously, the cheaper ones won't work that well. So the controversy thing, if, if it even is one, is just NVIDIA calling out bad monitors when AMD should have been doing that? Yeah, yeah I mean, like, I didn't really get that. AMD's <laughs> in a tough position because they, they want to expand their brand and they want to they wanna expand FreeSync. But on the other hand, like, if you tighten up the standards, then these monitors, they don't get to have FreeSync. And they can work with Adaptive Sync, but... I mean, I it's, it's just a trade-off they don't want to make. All I know I'm is fine. I'm going to buy one now. <laughs> I mean, like, the, mo the free sync monitors I have are fine, and they weren't super expensive. They were uh, about 350 and 250 uh, uh, total. Yeah. I think it's a good idea, because, like, now you have, like, the G-Sync, you know, like, what free sync monitors aren't garbage. I'm just worried mm -hmm. that the that the support won't be very good, so that it'll push people to premium for the for the manual enabling uh, adaptive sync monitors that they tested but did not pass. I mean, Wait. is that really gonna push people over to G Sync? Well, listen, I got a uh, I got my Spectre because my Envy wasn't that good, and it was a Raven Ridge Envy to be fair, and the drivers suck. But I was like, man, I want something that's like the Envy but better because I have the envy and I want more. There's so many links in the chain there though. <laughs> I know, but if you have something and it's not that great, you want something that's entirely good. That solves all the main issues. You want something that's all great. Yeah. You want something that's all great. So you buy Nvidia and Intel. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's basically it. That's it. Uh, if I had more about, money, I would think ultra. Is that is that what they're calling uh, regular G Sync now? No, 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 no. This is uh, because G Sync and HDR is now branded yeah. G Sync okay. Ultra, and so right. the question is: Is there any like uh, adaptive sync plus HDR monitors, and will uh, NVIDIA support those, or will uh, they just say yes? The only- yes, there Ooh. is. That's sneaky. Mm. Yeah, I asked the NVIDIA people that on Twitter, and I got no response. But I also never get a response from NVIDIA, so yeah, I don't think they like you. AMD PC liked one of my tweets one time. Oh my gosh, <laughs> you're a snowflake. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening. See you next time.